the big trade. And that's what, that's what everybody looks forward to in the offseason, the big trade. And in your uh, last piece with The Athletic, you, you talked about, you know, when, when we talk about the second apron and approaching these aprons, that this summer may be the best shot here to make that trade and really solidify this team. And with that, everybody's looking at Julius Randle. Are they going to keep him? Are they going to trade him? What, what do you What do you think at, at this point in time? I think the only way they trade Julius Randle is if they find somebody who they deem a real significant upgrade over him, yeah. which is not very many people. So do I think it's on the table that they could trade Julius Randle this summer? Sure. It's on the table. Do I think that it's likely? I wouldn't say that yeah. because I don't think this is a scenario where they're like trying to trade Julius Randle. Right. This is a scenario in which if you call about Julius Randle and you're offering a better player than Julius Randle, then they'll listen. No brainer. Yeah. Or if they find out that I'm just saying a name because he's an amazing player. If they find out that Giannis is available, which I don't anticipate. Mm -hmm. But they find out Giannis is available. I'm sure they'd be willing to include Julius Randle on a Giannis trade, both mm -hmm. because Giannis is an upgrade on Randle and because those two would not be the greatest fits together. It wouldn't really make any sense. Mm -hmm. So, like, there are scenarios in which they would trade Randle, but I think they're few. Now, it's possible one of them presents itself this summer because it's possible that some star wants out and that that team wants to stay competitive and says – we want Julius Randle back in this trade, or maybe Randle goes to a third team because the Knicks need to include him for salary reasons. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's Randle and Bogdanovich and that gets you the 49 million or whatever it is in salaries. But like, I don't think they're just looking to trade Julius yeah. Randle at all. I, I think a thing that really gets lost really gets lost amongst the season because the Knicks had a solid playoff run because Jalen Brunson was so good after Randall got hurt is this narrative that I keep seeing, which just isn't true, yeah. which is that they're better without Julius yeah. Randall. And it's a and, lot of former players saying this, which is kind of weird. It's so weird. I yeah. don't, I don't, I, I don't know where <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't know what evidence you can use. I don't care how you look at the game. I don't care if you're analytics forward. I don't care if you are, I don't care if you're, purely on the eye test and you hate the numbers. I don't care if you watch in a rudimentary fashion. I don't care if you're an absolute diehard. I just genuinely don't know where, what actual evidence you can use to back up that opinion and justify it. it. They were, they were 12 and two in the 14 games with Julius Randall after trading for Ananobi. They were playing beautiful team ball. They looked great. They were way better when Randall was on the court. I, I, I don't really know where that's coming from. That's starting five also. But after that trade, what was the talk when they were winning all those games, when they were killing Denver, when they were killing uh, they were killing Philadelphia, Philly, they Philly. Yeah. beat Minnesota, yeah. who might be the favorites to win, at least to win the West right now. Yeah. Although I guess maybe they're not because they lost game yeah. one. But they win all those games. What's everyone talking about? My goodness, this starting five looks ridiculous. Yeah, That starting five was like, what, plus 18 per 100 possessions yeah. or something like that? And everyone thought, oh, my goodness, this starting five is just eviscerating every other team starting five. This is crazy. The chemistry was beautiful. So I don't really know where it's coming from. I think people saw Randall go down and, and the Knicks kind of had some more ball movement, had Brunson running around more screens, obviously, which is something that I wrote about throughout the season. And I think sometimes people see a more aesthetic. not You know, what? I don't even want to say more aesthetic because they were playing beautiful ball in January. Yeah, they were playing gorgeous basketball in January and Randall was a massive part of it. I, I remember talking to people in January and talking to Julius in January about like, mm -hmm. I've never, I personally, in my three years of covering him, had never seen him so incredibly bought in. I'd never seen him so appreciative and, and so cognizant of mm -hmm. what was going on around him. It almost felt like I've said this before. It almost felt like he found God in basketball. Like he, and I spoke mm. to people with the team and behind the scenes. And they're like, yeah, he was after that OG trade. He was like bought in. It was like, he mm. realized like, Oh, 
this is what can happen when you're playing basketball because the fit was so beautiful like he literally called and and to be clear like none of this is like a swipe at rj barrett Mm -hmm. and i think those guys on a personal level get along very well and i think that's been very clear because they're both similar sorts of personalities where they just they want to work they want to play ball and 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 they're nice people so they they get along well but from a basketball perspective i think they both knew rj and julius that it just didn't work stylistically their games were way too contrasting yeah. for it to be perfect and for them to eat, for for each of them to maximize you know the, both their their own talents at the same time and i remember og coming in after literally the first game julius says oh he's a, it's like he's the perfect fit it was the smiliest Julius Randall I've ever seen in my mm. entire life. And it was like, it was the perfect fit. And you start talking to people there and it's like, he is so bought in. I don't think that would change. Mm. I think this, this locker room has very obviously a culture where that's the type of basketball they encourage. And I don't think that would change with Randall back. So I'm just, I just wanted to say my piece on that. I, I'm mm. not the whole, they're better without Randall thing. I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't know. I don't know where I don't know how you can support that. I don't like if you want to say if you want to say if they got a player whose talent level was equal to Randall, but played a different style or something like that, okay, we can have that discussion. Yeah. Like if you want to say, like, oh, you'd rather have Mikel Bridges than Julius Randall, we can have that discussion. Sure. That's fine. But that doesn't mean they're better without Julius Randall. Like, come on yeah. now. I, I, I think it's pretty ridiculous um, to, to think that. Now, shout out to my guy, TM. He's a, he's a chief moderating officer in, in uh, here at Knicks Fan TV. He makes this thing go in the chat. Now, he's saying, well, th- you know, you wouldn't have seen other guys make their ascension like they did in the playoffs, like a Josh Hart and things of that nature. But from my, my opinion, I'm not sure that's what we really want to rely on every year in the playoffs. Like, that was good to see. But do I want to go into every playoff relying on Josh Hart to be, you know, one of the top scorers on this team? I don't. I think you get a healthy Julius Randle. You bring Josh Hart off the bench. He's even more dynamic. He's more fresh. He can still grab and go. He can still have his impact. But this Knicks team needs a legitimate, bona fide playoff performer that you can rely on, who's going to make the defense bend, who's going to draw double teams, who can take pressure off of Brunson. They need that. And... I want to see if Julius Randle can be that guy because I'm with you. I don't think they're just going to trade him just for the sake of it. I never thought that they would. It makes no sense to. If you can get a bona fide upgrade, yes, and there are players who I I would make that move for if they become available. But for right now, the way that this thing was moving, there's no chance that they're better without this version of Julius Randle if he can perform in the playoffs. Yeah, and what I'll add on that hard point is don't necessarily confuse opportunity for improvement. Not to say that Josh Hart is not better than ever. He's obviously better than ever. And if he were given this opportunity three years ago, I don't know if he would necessarily step up the way he did. But a lot of it is just opportunity. It's the NBA. Like, guys are really good. Someone's going to get points. Part of the reason why you're seeing Hart's scoring numbers so far up, part of the reason why you're seeing Hart's rebound numbers so high up is because he was playing 43 minutes a game. And (laughs) so you're just seeing those numbers compile. And if you look at the per 36s, it's kind of fine. We also saw a lot of times where teams were helping off of Hart. We saw times where Hart was hesitant to shoot. Indecisive. And we saw nights where Hart was incredible. We saw nights where he was amazing. And you know what? The beauty of having a deep roster is that when you recognize Josh Hart is having an amazing night, then play him 40 minutes. Sure, he's playing amazing. Go for it. What you want is the luxury to be able to say, okay, Hart's hesitating on his threes. They're not guarding him. The offense might be a little cramped. He doesn't have it. He didn't have it defensively. Basically, by his standards, I didn't think he had it defensively for Mm. three of the last four games of that series. I did not think he had it defensively. He was he was struggling against Pascal Siakam once he had to take on that matchup. Siakam was spinning by him, not necessarily just shooting over him. And I thought he was getting blown by too much by Mm. Josh Hart's standards. Mm. Mm. He broke down. He broke down is what happened during that series. He just was so gassed. He gave everything. He went so hard for every single minute of every game that he had nothing left to give. And you don't want that. The whole point is to sustain it for four rounds. Right. You don't want that. You want him to have a ton left to give. You're not even 
halfway into your playoff run if yeah. your goal is to win a title yeah. at that point. So, like, you you don't want those guys breaking down. Having more good players is never – it's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. Having more good players. And and from a role acceptance perspective, Hart doesn't care who's coming off the bench. I mean, he does. Like, he'll, he'll complain about it publicly because he loves throwing Tibbs under the bus. Mm-hmm. But it's not going to – it's not going to change anything. He's he's going to do whatever he needs off the bench. He's going to fill in as a spot starter. Like that's that's his that's his ultimate role. And and the other part is, go look at Jalen Brunson's shooting numbers in the playoffs. I understand that Brunson had some incredible performances, and I think overall he was very good in the playoffs. But he had a lot of performances where his shot totally fell off. Mm-hmm. Games one and two against Philadelphia, mm-hmm. the end of that Pacer series, he was not you know, this, this score with ease that we saw for so long. And part of the reason why is because every single Brunson shot is so freaking difficult. It's a grind. And he's, and he's such a great player that a lot of times he makes them, but every shot is so difficult. And I don't care if you are Michael Jordan or Ryan Archie Diakno, you prefer easier shots. You will be better if your shots are easier. And Brunson's going to have to take a lot of bailout shots and a lot of shots that look difficult are still good shots for him because he's such an incredible shooter, especially from the mid range. Mm -hmm. But Randall makes Brunson's shots way easier. Like there is a reason that Brunson's spot up threes just went away. And I know DJ Zulo at um, Nick's film school has been all over this. Mm -hmm. Like Brunson's spot up threes just went away when Randall got hurt. True. He just stopped shooting spot up threes at the volume he was at the accuracy he was there was no one to create those shots for him you want his 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 point totals up his efficiency totals up with maybe his shot numbers down and the burden on him down get a dude who can just kill guys in the post and then create threes the other part is that randall does is he adds he adds diversity to their offense where the knicks offense kind of became They want to create threes. They want to create shots at the rim. And the reason why the ability to get threes and shots at the rim is they're going to get downhill with Mm -hmm. their drivers. Mm -hmm. And they're either going to do that on pick and rolls or they're going to do that on catch and you catch and goes, Mm -hmm. or they're going to do that on dribble handoffs. And like Hartenstein is, or Hartenstein maybe is going to help them cut towards the rim. Mm -hmm. Randall gives them another element for hitting the paint where Randall can post up and draw a double team. And he's the one guy on the team who can post up and draw a double team. And it just gives them a different element if a defense is doing something that's really effective against those Hartenstein DHOs and or against those Brunson pick and rolls. Mm. It gives them another place to say, okay, you know what? We want to create threes by getting deep, deep into the paint. We want to create easy shots by getting deep into the paint. Uh, we got a mismatch for Julius Randle. Let's throw it into him. They're going to have to double, and Randall's going to hit the guy in the corner. How many threes did they get like that in the first yeah. half of the season? Yeah, you know. It's true. It's true. So it's just you want diversity in your offense. You want diversity in your offense. Julius Randle brings that. 